Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Love, Sex and Magic. I'm so excited for this episode because we have the incredible woman that is Latham Thomas. She is the founder of Mama Glow. She is a doula. She's a doula educator. She helps women take back their power around pregnancy. She's also on the front lines of addressing the black maternal health crisis in the USA and really uses her voice for so much good and so much activism in the world around motherhood, birthing, the reproductive journey for women everywhere. So I'm really excited for this conversation. We talked all about pregnancy. We talked about the journey of working with a doula is. We talked about the uh, the issues that marginalized communities are facing around pregnancy and childbirth. We talked about how you can have more of a spiritual and soulful journey with your pregnancy and the birthing process. This conversation was so rich and I just took so much from it myself. So I really hope you enjoy it. So Latham, it is so wonderful to have you on. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, so I have been following your work for so many years um, and all of the amazing things that you're doing with your with your life expression. You are a doula, you are not just a doula trainer, but you're running the fastest growing doula immersion program in the US, which I just think is incredible. Um, to me, you're just really changing the way that women and just changing the way that the culture sees the birthing process. Um, you're also a pleasure and sexuality educator, helping women understand their reproductive health more. Um, and you're also super vocal of addressing the black maternal health crisis in the US that we're seeing right now. So I just see you as this multi-passionate um, mother, entrepreneur, an incredible woman who's just turning her hand to so many things. So, and I, I also really love how you use your platform to raise and um, get really vocal about stories of black motherhood and black pregnancy and black birth stories. Um, so yeah, congratulations on, on an amazing body of work. Wow, thank you so much. It's really um, my calling and something that I feel needs to be done. Um, it's certainly not out of convenience that I do it, but certainly out of um, a calling that I feel it's so important to speak to the issues and to address what's happening around us um, in a way that we can make impact. And so um, it's certainly part of uh, how I was raised and um, and something that I like to continue to, to pass down uh, certainly to my son, but also to other people who are interested in, in getting involved, whether whatever the issue is, knowing that each of us has a powerful voice that we can use to, to address it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel especially this year, we're really being shown that like how we show up right now is, is having such a huge impact on future generations. We are all being called into being the change that we really want to see in the world and this is a this is a great example of that so i'd love if you could share more of your story and how this passion and this purpose called you yeah so my um my journey really started with my pregnancy my son who's 17 now um if you think back to 17 years ago 18 years ago the internet was completely different the landscape of like typing something in and searching and having like a, a thousand um, you know, things come up was not happening. There was not this type of flexibility and plasticity um, in the internet world for information, certainly around pregnancy. And being from California and living in New York, I wanted to have a really holistic experience. I knew that I wanted to have an out of hospital birth uh, at home or in the birth center. Um, I just didn't know how to achieve it in New York. And thankfully, I was able to deliver my son at a birth center that was seven blocks away from where I lived. It was a freestanding birth center, which means that it was not connected to a hospital. And um, and I was able to have an incredible birth there unmedicated. And I left six hours later with this child and found the entire experience to be deeply uh, empowering. I had a midwife, um, even to deliver where my son was born, I did 21 hours of education which was the requirement, the prerequisite really for giving birth there was that you're educated in the process. And so for me, so much of this experience is really about education and a re-education and an unlearning of a lot of what we've heard and uh, internalized about our bodies and what's possible. And in, in sort of my own journey, 
it became clear that I was supposed to support people in the doula work. Um, and so I did seek to become a doula, but it wasn't a choice. It wasn't a passion. It was definitely a calling. All of this work that I do is a calling. It's not something that I am, I would say, like I don't like the word passion because passion's connected to something that is, um, you have a choice around what you're passionate about. You don't have a choice ar around what you're called to do. You know, what you're mm -hmm. called to do is is linked to purpose and it's like placed upon you. You're anointed with a calling and it's not like a choice, right? And so when you get up in the middle of the night to attend a birth and it's three in the morning and it's snowing outside and you have to trek in, you know, the darkness to get on the subway or get in a car and head to someone's home deep in the middle of the night, that is not something you're passionate about, right? <laughs> it can do it, really, right? So it's something that you're called to do. And so I believe that people mm -hmm. who choose this path, um, and choice is also a word that's like, is it really a choice? No, it's, it's that we feel deeply called and we answer that call. And so I would say that that's what really led me was was a deep calling. And and I, I know that for folks who, who have had these experiences in their lives where they felt pulled to something, pulled into a vortex, that you don't have any control over that, right? It's it's something that you just feel like you you must do. And so that's really what it was for me. It was that I must do this. Um, I could certainly think of other things that would be more convenient to do in life, you know what I mean? Or, mm -hmm. or more easy to do. But this for me was what, what, what I was supposed to do. And so I just answered the call. I was obedient and I believe that when you when you follow that sort of order that's put in place, that mandate that's put in place by spirit or God or, or however you want to call a higher power, when you answer that, you're rewarded, right? Because courage is what actually fuels you and that's what you're rewarded for, your courage. And so for me, it's been one of right un uncovering what this work is on a daily basis and and answering what I'm being called to, to do and checking in on a moment to moment to make sure that I'm fortifying myself so I can show up to the work. And so I think that's something that I encourage everyone to do is, um, is to always check in with yourself, especially while you're doing whatever it is that you're being called to do because it can be deeply depleting, right, to, to serve and um, and service has to be rooted in self-care. And so that's really how I like move through the work and, and how I sort of came to, to answering the call. I, I can tell you one story, which was that um, I was at an ashram and I was teaching and it was my birthday and they did this puja ceremony for my birthday. And then I had a Vedic astrology reading. And at the time I was doing work around maternal health, but it wasn't fully mama glow yet and it wasn't fully the doula work hadn't been attached to the to the work yet and so i'm with this vedic astrologer and he tells me he's doing this divination you know um, ritual and he says a bunch of things most of which i couldn't understand but then there was moments where i could understand the english that came through and he said you're supposed to mother the mother and i heard that and i was like okay so that was like one, you know, very clear sign, right? Then wow. he gave me some numbers, which I wrote down. And um, and I wrote them. I still have this little sheet of paper from the notes I took. And so um, from so many years ago, right? So I, I wrote down the numbers and then I went home and I forgot, right? Like you get back into your flow. And, and so I remember like looking everywhere, like trying to see like, does that mean something, right? And so one day um, I checked my email which by the time back then you didn't check your email daily you checked your email like maybe once every two weeks maybe once a month it was not something that we showed up every day you know we checked our uh -huh. mail for like letters at the time so <laughs> that just to date ourselves for folks who are like what a mailbox right so, um, snail mail right we used to call it snail mail and then like email so i check my email box and there was a few emails in there and one was um, the acceptance to a doula fellowship program. And I looked at the date 
and the date was one of the days that corresponded with what he wrote, with the numbers that he gave me that I wrote down. And so then that was also very clear that I'm supposed to be doing this. So I was like, okay, thank you, God. I'm gonna answer, I hear you loud and clear. I'll answer the call, right? So that's what it was for me. It was very much like being pulled into the vortex and um, and then just saying, okay, finally I surrender, right? And I think at a certain point when you when you just allow yourself to surrender and be enveloped by what it is that wants to move through you, um, I think that life, the pursuit and the journey becomes not necessarily easier, but I think it's smoother, right? Mm. Than digging your heels into the earth, which I'm prone to as a Taurus, you know, digging your heels mm -hmm. and trying to drag your feet to it. When you decide, like, let me just soften into this, um, mm. more easeful. Beautiful. Yeah. And then you just become like this, this conduit for the mission, the purpose, because okay. you're just in that alignment. Um, my partner's a Taurus, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, that sounds incredible. And I, I completely hear you. Like, it sounds like you just answered this call. And as soon as you answered it, it just started to like slot into place, flow. Life is just happening through you. So, so beautiful. And you're so right. Like life really rewards you when you accept that call. Yeah. So like when you decided to step into that and you, you just decided, right, this is it, I'm in. Like, what did you start to see around you in culture that you felt like, wow, this really needs to shift. Like I'm here to make big changes. Like, were you seeing a lot of disempowerment around the birthing process, around maternal health? Like, what were you starting to see? I mean, in the beginning, I think so much of it was just learning and being a witness to the process, seeing how, um, there was a difference in how certain people were treated, you know, in the birth process, depending on like, you know, what their economic status was, um, what their race was, um, what their partner status was. Like, you would just see like little things right, that that would that would be sort of cataloged, right? Um, but in the beginning, I think it was so much about like the work and just diving in that I hadn't made the um, connections yet to um, to seeing full on disparities in the way that we see them today. I think that um, I did know that there were definite differences in like, you know, hospitals and how they deployed resources and, um, you know, public hospitals that had money versus ones that did not. And, you know, I was able to see sort of a difference there for sure. And, um, and then also when I started, I worked a lot with, um, immigrant women, uh, teens and, uh, low income people. And so in that experience, I was able to also see that there were people who did not have necessarily uh, command over the English language and didn't feel safe in spaces or people who were young, right? Going in and being perceived as not smart enough because they were teens or people who were low income. They didn't believe that they should have access to certain resources because they couldn't pay it with their insurance or being treated as though they shouldn't have access or not believing that they, um, or having, uh, access to certain tools and and resources um all of that was like kind of you know coalescing so it wasn't like i saw like one thing and then it was like an aha moment but i think it was like watching sort of over the years different things and also learning about disparities and learning about you know because we learned a lot of this stuff you know when i was in my doula training but seeing it in practice and then knowing that there are people who are underserved um led me to work with um, underserved communities in the beginning. It expanded outside of that. I mean, I work with everyone now. And even now I don't work with as many families because so much of my work is focused on education. So I would definitely say that um, it was in the last few years where we saw like these increases in black maternal deaths. Um, it's been a 25 year increase in black maternal deaths in, in the United States. And so that number has gone up every year and um, it's become 
that the U.S. is the most dangerous place in the world in terms of developed uh, countries, quote unquote, uh, to give birth, right? It's the most dangerous mm-hmm. place. And so given that information, given the fact that, you know, I'm part of the community and demographic that suffers the most at the hands of um, maternal mortality, it was really important to do something. And so I know that I couldn't do it alone. You know, there was a couple of seminal pieces of um, media that came out. Um, New York Times did a piece, ProPublica did a piece, and those were kind of, uh, I think the, uh, I would say the watershed moments nationally around the conversation that made it so that now there was a spotlight. Now people were very mm-hmm. clear about, whoa, this is happening. Many people didn't know, many black people didn't know. And so yeah. a lot of folks were like, I need to do something. And so what we did in 2018, after again, feeling called to do it, feeling like it was a necessity, but not knowing what result, is that we launched um, a doula training program. And that was our uh, Mama Glow Doula Immersion Program. It launched in June of 2018. We announced it in like mid-May. It sold out in two days. We announced July. It is it sold out in three days. We announced August. It sold like just every single one sold out as soon as we would announce. And we realized, I thought like maybe three people would sign up or something. Mm-hmm. We realized that people really want this information. They really want to connect with this work. And we also realized that um, our classes shaped up to be mostly women of color and mostly black women, and that there was such a unique need for this vantage point that was centering the marginalized experience inside of the context of this conversation and this work. And so um, people felt seen in the work and they felt connected to the work, um, which we're really thankful for. And so I think, uh, you know, as we talk about these issues and as we explore like, um, you know, the, the context and the moment that we're in, you know, this, this global movement that's here, right. That's looking at, um, the safety and sanctity of black lives. Like so much of what I want people to focus on too is, is putting an emphasis on protecting black lives before they're born, right. Protecting Mm. people now right like not just um not just being in the streets when we see um a death or a lynching you know like we've seen um with george floyd for instance right that is horrifying and that is um what led a lot of people to start their activism and i'm inviting people to um to bring their activism to a seed level right, to start with people who have been unborn, right? And what are the forces that are working against them even while they're, you know, being created, even while before they are born, right? Even when they get here and they're infants, what are the forces that are working against them, you know, when they're Mm -hmm. infants? And so when we start to think about what that means and the womb being the first environment, that means that there are forces that are working on not only the baby, but on that mother or that birthing person while pregnant. And what does that mean for them when they give birth, right? Can they safely give birth? Um, is the stress that they're carrying that's economic, that's racial, that's, um, you know, so many things, right, that show up, um, anxieties, stresses, all these things impact our health outcomes and so, and make us vulnerable. So what does that mean for that person, right? And how, and how we can have poor health outcomes be linked to the fact that not because we're black, but because of racism, right? And so I think yeah. that's the issue because people see like, well, what is it about black people? It's actually, what is it about racism that makes us yeah. happen to black people? right that's really what we should be questioning and so because if these if these forces were not working on us right and shaping us in such a way that made us vulnerable 
then we'd be having a different conversation. But right. the conversation we're having is that black women are four to five times more likely than white women to die during childbirth or due to childbirth related causes. And that has to end, right? And so that's the that's that's where we're at. Um, mm -hmm. And I think for people who are coming into this conversation, this is an important space to, to advocate, right? If you're gonna talk about safety for black lives, like talk about it here too, right? It has to be inclusive of maternal health. Um, if you're fighting for reproductive equity and justice, birth has to be part of that conversation, right? And so I think that that's really where I'm um, interested in making sure that we that we fill, fill gaps and uh, educate so that we can have, um, you know, folks still beating the drum. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's so beautiful to hear you share that. Um, and like you shared, like from the seed level, from the womb, you know, from the very, very beginning. Um, I remember recently reading about the, um, the death of Shah Asia Temple. And like that really sh like shocked me to read that it was, it's not just like the black women are four times more likely to die during childbirth, but actually in New York, it's 12 times more likely. Yes. That was like, what the fuck? Like how, like, how is this happening? Like, how is this, how have we been allowing this to happen? So, and I, and I completely hear you where you say like, it's not, it's not like, why is it happening because they're black? It's like, let's look at why it's happening. Like, why is the racism existing? Um, you know, that's where we really need to be looking. So how can, how can women, like especially women of color and black women, really advocate for themselves more through the pregnancy process when we're in this culture? You know, like what can they be, like what questions do they need to be asking their doctors? How can they really feel more empowered around uh, the entire pregnancy and birthing process? Yeah, well, I think first, like, you know, you mentioned, um, Shaija Washington, I think that, for instance, her situation, you know, being in Brooklyn, going into the hospital for um, being admitted for elevated blood pressure, being there for a few days, um, being administered an epidural um, after refusing it, and then ending up dead. Like, it doesn't make sense. Um, you know, there's information coming out, there's there's some investigation happening, but at the same time, there's no accountability, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, what's really important and what has to be noted here is and underscored, I think is that, you know, it's not, it's not incumbent upon, or shouldn't be incumbent upon black and brown people to defend themselves in spaces that they should be safe, right? Like mm -hmm. we should be designing spaces to be safe for everyone. And the fact that they aren't is is really critical for us to look at, but also it's critical for us to have alternatives, right? So if we're sending people into hospitals as if that's the only place where somebody can have a baby, it's not, right? So I think we need to educate that there are out of hospital birth options available to people who are low risk, right? Mm -hmm. Many people fall into a low risk category who can do home birth or birth center births, right? You can also work with midwives um, at home in the hospital or in birth centers, depending on where you're located. Um, your local hospital may have midwives on staff, depends, right? But you wanna look and do the research. And, and make sure that you make a choice that's aligned with your values. That's number one. Understanding that um, you know economics uh, really complicate things. And so whether you have access to a private insurance versus um, Medicaid or you know state um, insurances that are that are available to you, um, I mean it changes things, right? You might have the inconsistency of providers, your provider might change, you know, at the last minute because, um, you know, your insurance, if they could get like a patient that's gonna be able to pay, you know, out of pocket or pay for a service, it's, um, it's easier to get that money than it is to try to get it from someone who may or may not be able to based on their insurance. I think also, you know, for people who are coming in and understanding that in this climate, you know, having advocacy tools is critically important to help you navigate 
this experience of, of moving through your pregnancy and going into the postpartum experience, um, including the birth. Understanding how to speak up for yourself, what to ask for, how to engage with providers is critically important. Understanding what consent means inside a birth space mm -hmm. is critically important. How to uh, use informed consent as a model to make sure that you understand procedures prior to them being administered. Um, you know, not uh, treatments after they've been administered. Understanding, um, you know, what the patient advocacy safety net looks like for you in the birth process is critically important. And also understanding what it means to have um, other people there, right? Like, do you need your own, um, you know, like birth partner, right? Whether that's your, your lover, your sister, whether it's your mother, a cousin, a friend, um, whoever will be going with you, like that's important to make sure they're educated as well. And then having access to a doula and doulas are accessible. I know that there's a narrative that, that doulas are expensive or for the 1% or whatever. I don't know where that came from, but uh, that's been something that's been sort of pervasive, this idea that, you know, it's expensive to, to hire a doula, but um, because I think a lot of people who have been in the public eye that have used doulas, I think people think that, oh, it must be like an expensive service. It's not. It can be on a sliding scale. You can have people who will work for free up to, you know, whatever amount, right? And so if you are to say to someone, look, I can only afford X, Y, Z, um, it's incumbent upon that doula to share with you what they can do based on that fee structure. Um, or, it, you know, connect you to someone else who can work with you, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, it doesn't mean that you get less of a service because you're paying less money than someone else. It means that you're getting a full service and that full service is um, delivered to you, um, you know, with the, with the exchange of, of, um, of energy or, or of, of money, right? And right. so whatever that looks like. But I think for people to understand that they have a pathway to um, support and they have pathway to resources is really important. You know, education through attending webinars and online classes can be such a great way to uh, further elucidate your, um, your knowledge around what's possible and what the experience can be. Touring the hospital, finding out their C-section rate, you know, um, looking at uh, the list of providers and you know, making sure that you feel like you have someone who's culturally competent, you know, not everybody can understand you and your values, you know, not every doctor mm -hmm. just because they're skilled um, can really be the best fit for you, right? And so having the courage and, and knowing when it's time to like, you know, switch or, or to um, explore other options is also important. So I think like there's so many things we can do, but again, I wanna underscore that it should not be incumbent upon the people who are underserved and who are um, under the most threat to have to fight for their existence, right? To have to right. um, to have to challenge this notion that they matter. You know, we're we're talking about a system that was essentially put into place when we talk about um, the modern healthcare system. Really, in the United States, we are talking about a system that was founded to essentially make sure that enslaved labor, uh, you know, had, uh, that people could um, protect their slave labor, right? Mm -hmm. So what that meant for modern gynecology, it was really about making sure that enslaved women could reproduce, could be healed from the pathologies that they had, um, but that information that was gained about their pelvis was also used to um, to correct pathologies in white women, but it wasn't um, you know a benevolent thing like we want to solve this issue for enslaved people. It was like no, we want to solve this issue because we have economics tied up in these people, right? These people are worth money, right? And so during chattel slavery, the advancements that we saw in medicine were inextricably connected to the fact that you have people who are um, advancing your wealth, right? And so 
we have a medical system that's never really come to terms with or acknowledged or or had a reckoning with its foundings and right. the science that was used to uh, propagate and and to um, uh, disseminate the information about its findings and and we still have people seeped in those values and, and ways of thinking still to this day and we have medical students till this day who might believe that black women don't experience the sensation of pain the way white women do or that oh my god yeah or you know these kind of things pervasive yeah. and we have we have documentation from like the 1700s right that says mm -hmm. this right medical journal that that say this and so for it to be still to this day a belief really right. shows you how ingrained uh, racism is inside of this this system and so I think for folks to understand that it's not just we're not talking about individuals we're talking about a system right a yeah. system wide problem that exists not only here in the United States, um, exists globally, um, anti-blackness anti exists globally. And so while we can point to this issue in the United States, the UK can also point to the same issue, right? Right, there's a lot Completely. of Right, there's a lot of, I think, um, parallels to be drawn um, where we see populations of people and we see disparity, you know, uh, across race. And so I think that you know, it is important to educate. It is important for us to be able to advocate for ourselves. It is important for us to know the issues, but it is also important for us to to know that we should be protected and to fight for that. Um, and those of us who are here and who have agency should should use and deploy some of our time and resources to to advocating for this issue and taking some of the burden off of Black and Brown people. And I want for Black and Brown people to be able to reclaim joy in this process. I feel like. Mm -hmm. This should not be, you should not be moving to your birth process and your pregnancy thinking about like, am I going to die? Like, I don't want people to be having that as a mantra. I don't want people to be having that as a, as a underlying thought. It was not something I was thinking about when I was pregnant. And I feel like I want to get to a place where that's not on somebody's mind, right? Whether right. or not they survive the birth. I want people to know that, um, that, that joy is a path, is a pathway um, for us, that is part of our birthright, and and mm -hmm. that joy in birth and joy in pregnancy and this transformative event that's unfolding within us is is such a beautiful process and and should be. And I want to get back to that. I want people to be able to lean into that and believe that and walk in that um, that faith as well. Yeah, wow, that's so beautiful. I completely agree. It's it's a hundred percent. It's it's it, they it shouldn't be up to black mothers and and you know these women going through this beautiful process to worry about how they're going to be treated by the medical system um it's for sure like a systemic issue that we all need to really really work on changing and what i'm hearing you saying is that you're really providing this space where women can feel um, really empowered and take their power back into their own hands around their birthing process um, and really, really feel like they can do it their own way. I'd love to hear more about like what, like for someone that's maybe not heard of a doula before or someone that's maybe thinking about starting trying for a baby and they want to have a more soulful, um, empowered experience than just kind of going along with the societal norm of pregnancy and childbirth. Like what is the what is the journey of a like of working with a doula like like what exactly are they doing how are they helping along the process yeah so a doula is um a non-clinical care provider who shows up as um emotional support physical support education advocacy they support your partner if you have a partner present and really helping birthing people on this journey to uh pregnancy birth and postpartum with hand holding, um, spirit guiding, and um, and really like holding space for their experience, whatever that experience is. And I just want to clarify for people who think that it's something that's only accessible to people who are planning an unmedicated birth or an out of hospital birth or a home birth. It is, um, you know, doulas can be brought in to, to births that are planned C-sections, for instance. Doulas can be brought in 
to experiences where there's going to be a surrogate um, or a surrogate birth. Um, doulas can be brought in to help families transition into adoption. Doulas can be brought in, you know, uh, for bereavement if someone loses a baby um, or has a stillbirth, right? Like there's so many uh, points along the journey of the entire reproductive continuum that doulas are present. And, you know, again, when you spoke to sort of what I, I work on, um, you know, pleasure and intimacy um, and certainly empowerment around um, period health, you know, is, is part of that too. And so we're there also to usher people into, um, you know, menstruation and, and what it means to bleed and, and, and having, um, you know, a, a focus on menstrual health too. So there's, there's so many areas that we touch, right, along the reproductive continuum. And so I just want to clarify if people feel like, oh, I'm not having this type of birth, so I can't have a doula whatever is happening for you, you can bring in a doula, right? So um, it doesn't just have to be the, um, the experience of uh, like a blissful TV birth or whatever, right? It can be whatever you need, whatever you desire. And um, even on the fertility side, if you're going through the challenges of getting pregnant, you can have a doula for that, right? To help handhold while you go through the process of, you know, the the um the blood work and the counseling and all that goes into that um the losses you know the the doubting that you have when you finally do get pregnant i mean there's so many things that touch people that doulas can be helps um can help support and so i just want to speak to that and say that we're here for like really all life transitions for people number one the other thing i would say is that you know the doula um can come in and support along the journey really at any stage but i tend to like people reach out and say hey i'm pregnant and they're like six to ten weeks that's early i'm happy to engage with like resources connect make sure people feel comfortable um but i really get into the bulk of my work um in the last trimester like second to last and so when you're ending your your second trimester going into your third is when i really like to start getting work done with people um, I stay engaged with them. We do a lot of education, but then I do a, a ton of hands-on in that final, um, you know, trimester. And and certainly, it's I would say it's it's the biggest focus of our work is going to be in the last three months, right? Is is where we're going to do a lot of our hands-on stuff that's going to really transform the experience. Leading up to that, I think the hand-holding is really critical, and doulas can show up you know, virtually, you know, especially in times mm -hmm. of COVID, you know, we can show up on Zoom, you know, um, you can be in the delivery room on Zoom with doulas. Many of our doulas have served in that way. Um, you can be in the hospital in some spaces, many places that are still fraught with um, COVID cases are not having um, doulas or partners in some cases in the room. And so you might show up virtually in that, in that uh, aspect. Um, but otherwise, if it's a home birth, for instance, like doulas are showing up to home births. And, and so, um, you know, it's, it's really like a, my clients call it like having a producer for your birth, right? <laughs> someone there, like one of my clients says that. And I think it's so brilliant because it is, it's like having someone who's thinking about all the things to be considered, right, in your process mm -hmm. and how you're going to internalize it, remember it, recall it, how you're going to talk about it. I'm considering all of that and I'm thinking about all of that so whether it is a gentle cesarean that we're planning for whether it is you know a, a postpartum doula that's going to show up after the baby is born and help you get systems in place and organize your life whether it is you know um, someone who's having their fifth kid and um and in a new city and trying to like navigate things I mean it doesn't matter right so I just want people to understand that irregardless of what, where you are in the journey, what it is that um, your life looks like, you deserve support, right? Mm. And, and I think that um, if you can think about it less so about whether or not you need something, but what you deserve, right? Yeah. So you may think that you don't need it, right? You may think, oh, I've done this before. I've had other children. Like, I'm good. Yeah, you might be good, but you deserve support. Right. So I want people to know that they deserve and it's not as it's not as difficult um, 
or it shouldn't be as difficult as like talking yourself into, you know, um, like advocating for it, right? Like I think sometimes we have to like make a list and convince ourselves, no, you deserve it because we evolved with support. We did not evolve alone. We did not evolve to experience life transitions alone. We evolved mm -hmm. to experience the things that happen in our lives with support. And so we're supposed to be witnessed through these processes and we're supposed to be held and swaddled and loved through these processes. We're not meant to be without our people, right? And so think about it like that. There is someone who's there that's just considering your needs. You don't mm -hmm. have to be thinking about all these other things. They're just considering your needs. And so if you could, if you could really connect to that energy of what it means to be supported and, and realize that you actually deserve it, things change, right? And, and, and we're here to also help uh, usher people into birthing themselves in a better and, and bigger and more expressed way, right? So as you're in this process with me as a client, like I'm not here to uh, encourage or try to keep you the same. I am here to help you shed your ego so when you come on the other side, you are a different person than you were when we started this process, right? So I'm here to also witness that shedding and mm -hmm. witness that, that, that molting that happens, you know, when we go through the darkest moments that are also to, to birth in the light. And if we think about what that means, also the darkness, it's like our babies are in darkness. Our babies are in the darkness of our wombs and born into light. And we have the opportunity to go into these places, right? Into the underbelly of the moon, into the darkness of, of where, where our strengths lie and challenge ourselves and push ourselves and come on the other side reborn. And so the darkness is critical for birth, right? So it's critical for us to go into the recesses of the areas where we are most challenged and most pained and bring that to the surface and, and platform it and look at it and organize it and ex excavate it and make it beautiful and then reintegrate, right? So mm -hmm. we're here for that. And that is what I'm here for, whether I'm your doula or whether you're in our doula training. This is the work that we are doing. It is about self-transformation in preparation for welcoming and ushering in the next generation. And so for me to do that as a doula, I have to be deeply committed and and engage with my own healing practices, my own healing as a constant journey, right? And uncovering. And I have to be able to witness you and your process, right? And so, and so I think that that is what's available to people that they don't realize. Like, do you need it? I don't know, but do you deserve it? Yes, right? Mm -hmm. You deserve it. And, and I would say there are people though that need it and don't realize that they do. And, um, and those people need and deserve support. And so I would love for you know people to come away from a conversation like this, knowing that um, whatever it is in their life that they're not connecting with or, or, or rooting into or what they're denying themselves from is, is really something that they should um, pursue as part of um, really like their need and also part of their birthright, you know, to pursue that thing that's doing inside or that question that's yeah. inside. And that's what I think comes up for many of our doulas who come to the training. There's something inside, there's a question that has been sparked. There's a calling that's stirring and they answer and they show up and they found something they weren't looking for when they arrive. And I think the same is to be said for the birthing person that comes, they find something that they didn't realize was there when they come on the other side. And, and so that's what we want to do and inspire in people. And so wherever you are on the journey, that's available to you, right? And, mm -hmm. and for people to know that if we could think about that, right? Like there's something to be had here if I'm able to soften and relax and be at ease and not worried about all the details. If somebody's handling all of that, where can I go, right? What are the depths that I can explore if I'm supported? And that's that's what's possible i think with, with doula support and so people could think from that lens of, of what the possibilities are and anchor into that and 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 then allow themselves to have that you know that's that's really like what i think can be a healing pathway for all of us and so 
that's really what I see and what I seek in, in the relationships that, that I build with clients, but certainly in the, the teaching for the doulas. This is what I want for them to uncover who they really are and be engaged with this fully expressed version of themselves, you know, through the, through the work. Mm. It's so, it's so powerful, such powerful work. You're doing such beautiful magic that you are creating and, and sharing with the world. And as you're sharing this, like I feel as someone that is not a mother, but who really desires to be one day soon, like I feel like just full body tingles and goosebumps mm -hmm. thinking about the whole journey and just how you're not just birthing the child, you're also birthing yourself as the mother and you're going from maiden to mother and to have another woman alongside you helping you through the process just feels so, just feels so deserving. And so like, it, it really feels like, oh, I deserve this, I'm worth this. Like this is, this is what all mothers deserve, you know, this support of other women. And, and like you said, like years ago, we were all in communities doing this with each other. We were all helping birth each other. And there was there was mothers everywhere, you know, raising children together. So um, I just feel as though the work that you're doing is really bringing the sacredness back to the whole pregnancy and birthing process, um, which is just so, so beautiful. And I, I would for sure love to work with her, uh, love to work with a doula in my when my time comes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I'd love to hear, I, I would absolutely love to keep keep talking with you for and just hear more about your work. So like, where can everyone come and find you, come and work with you? Like, what do you have going on right now in your world that people can come and get involved with? Yeah, um, thank you so much. I think, um, you know, for anyone that's on this journey, you don't have to be pregnant currently or even hoping to be. If you're someone who's just inspired by these types of conversations and just interested or intrigued about um, maternal health, about reproductive health or justice, you can go to mamaglow.com, M-A-M-A-G-L-O-W.com. Um, -A -A we have a series, a webinar series that focuses on um, demystifying maternal health for millennials. And it's great for people who are just sort of like, what's this about? Like, what are the things that I should know. I have so many questions. And so I encourage you to, to subscribe um, at the website so that you can be notified about that series. We do post on Instagram as well, and I post on my personal as well. So, and I'll share what those handles are as well. But it is something that I think is really important as we navigate this time, because we were denied a lot of tools and information and, and access points. And I feel like now like the floodgates are opening and educators and and wisdom keepers are bringing to the forefront this knowledge for for all of us that we should all have and have access to so make sure to um, tap into that and and find community around the issues that are important to you so that as you get closer to the time where it makes sense for you to be really engaging in um you know a, a family planning path or whatever that looks like you won't feel like how I did 17 years ago, trying to figure out where to go, right? You'll feel connected, you'll have a community, you'll have a, a chat, a group chat, you'll have you know, the folks that you've been attending classes and workshops with to also fall back on. You'll really have a tribe, right? And that's very important, I think, in in anything that we do. So so that's number one, go subscribe on glow.com. Um, on Instagram, we're at Mama Glow. It's M A M A G L O W, and then I'm just Glow Maven on Instagram. It's G L O W M A V E N, and yeah, I share like musings, and sometimes I do stuff on my lives, like oh, I'm gonna do a live now or whatever. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of unplanned things, but but mainly like I'm there to share like resources, musings, things that like matter to me. Um, and so it's a great place also to connect with resources, connect with other people, um, to learn what's going on uh, around these issues. I certainly use my page to platform the, the issues that matter to me and that are mattering to Mama Glow. Um, and I would definitely say, you know, um, if you're interested in taking this journey, you know, as a doula, if you're interested in work in any way, but not even only that, if you're interested in uncovering healing for yourself. If you're someone who, you know, has um, 
is open to an opportunity to connect deeper with your body, if you're open to healing, if you're ready to confront um, aspects of yourself that have been uh, locked away from you, and if you're ready to have a dialogue around what it means to be embodied and, and develop a somatic practice that can help you to be in a constant engagement of refining, uh, attuning, and, um, and queening yourself really, right? Of, of just anointing yourself and loving on yourself um, in a really deep way, then I would encourage you to join us um, for the doula training program because it's not only about helping other people and stepping out into the world and, and being like an advocate, but it is about becoming, you know, falling in love with yourself. And it is about healing yourself. It is about connecting with your ancestral wisdom. It is about all the things we talked about here um, and so some people will feel called and I want to make sure that if you feel that don't be like me and, <laughs> and get your feet dragged to the, you know, <laughs> to this journey, but, um, really just like explore it, right? Look and see if anything resonates for you. And it doesn't have to be mama glow. There's so many amazing places that you can go for, for education, but I'm speaking about like our, our training, this is what's available, right? Um, this, this experience and so you know, just look and see what you can do. And um, and then on the other side of that, I would also say, you know, advocacy is huge, right? If any of us can go out into the world and if we can look to see what we can do locally, right? Mm -hmm. Contacting our local officials, um, looking to see who is speaking to these issues of maternal health, you know, in our communities, making sure that if we have platforms, and Melissa's using her platform to, to speak to these issues, right? Like, figure out what you can do in your own way to advance the conversation, right? And so that is really the ask that I have for folks is just to keep keep beating the drum, you know, keep learning, keep growing, because that's the only way that we can continue to do this work um, together is if we band together. So we just appreciate mm -hmm. you. I appreciate you for this conversation and, and just inviting us into your community and the work that we're doing at Mama Glow. And um, yeah, so hopefully we'll see y'all outside of this podcast space mm -hmm. and also into some of these other interweb spaces and hopefully at some point soon in the future in person, right? Like when we can get back mm -hmm. outside and into the world, I hope to hug some of the people that I know are listening in. I hope some of you show up to the training, but I also hope that you, uh, many of you show up to the work because the work is really um, never ending. And so whatever you can commit, we would so appreciate. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This has been so magical. And I'm gonna share, I'm gonna link everything, all the everything you just mentioned up in the show notes, the trainings, the webinars, and, and everywhere that people can come find you so they can connect. Um, mm. But this has been magic. We're gonna head over now to get some more personal questions from a few of our members of the community that they have for you, Leila, uh, inside the Goddess Collective. But for now, I just wanna say thank you so much for your work. Thank you for coming and sharing your magic. Um, with our listeners, it's been so beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I hope you absolutely loved that episode. I hope it has inspired you to dream bigger and to create that vision for your future. As always, if you want to join us and go deeper, come and join us inside the community. We have an incredible group of women chasing their dreams on this soul mission in life. We have workshops in there. We have workbooks, coaching calls with me, and of course, extra bonus content from all of the podcast guests. So until next time, hit subscribe, share Share this episode if you loved it connect with me online and yeah i'll see you for another episode next week <laughs>